educated but if there's lack of integrity and ethics then all that success has no meaning at all what is the benefit in case people don't trust you so the time i started in the field technology has brought about the biggest change things have become faster is it accessible and one can do a lot more with a variety of tools available the other big change which has happened to the profession is the expectation of the stakeholders especially for the attest function performed by chartered accountants one should be able to collaborate capacity to listen and have the drive and ability to bring teams together to achieve the chartered goals my biggest motivator is serving the ca profession to be able to give back to the profession which has given me so much i call it a higher purpose i can bring my experience on the table and my life's learning to motivate the young chartered accountants to do better in this profession responsibility and accountability go hand in hand and one cannot expect accountability if there is no responsibility technology is changing the way we work today it is time we accept the need to go beyond our conventional role and be a business solution provider to our clients the future is more exciting than we know today and i think we as professionals need to upgrade and upskill ourselves so that we remain relevant to the business opportunities available to us having said that no compromise on ethics and integrity at all absolutely The best advice I received was from my dad to be honest in all my dealings whether it is personal or professional. Hi, my name is Sanjeev Chaudhary and I am a chartered accountant practicing for the last almost close to 38 years now. I love to spend time with my family and if I'm lucky uh, I do spend time with my grandson who's going to be 3 years old. My dad was an inspiration to me. He taught me the values and made me what I am today. The other person who inspired me the most was my first boss. He actually helped me shape my professional life. But the most inspiring of all is my wife. Integrity and ethics are very close to my heart and the way I operate. People may be very successful, they may be very educated, but if there's lack of integrity and ethics then all that success has no meaning at all what is the benefit in case people don't trust you from the time i started in the field technology has brought about the biggest change things have become faster is it accessible and one can do a lot more with a variety of tools available the other big change which has happened to the profession is the expectation of the stakeholders especially for the attest function performed by chartered accountants one should be able to collaborate capacity to listen and have the drive and ability to bring teams together to achieve the chartered goals my biggest motivator is serving the ca profession to be able to give back to the profession which has given me so much i call it a higher purpose i can bring my experience on the table and my life's learning to motivate the young chartered accountants to do better in this profession responsibility and accountability go hand in hand and one cannot expect accountability if there is no responsibility Technology is changing the way we work today. It is time we accept the need to go beyond our conventional role and be a business solution provider to our clients. The future is more exciting than we know today, and I think we as professionals need to upgrade and upskill ourselves so that we remain relevant to the business opportunities available to us. Having said that, no compromise on ethics and integrity at all. Absolutely.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's live webinar. Today, we have Sanjeev Chaudhary and Richard Reki with us who will share their views on values and ethics in the CA profession. I would now request Sanjeev to proceed with the discussion with Richard. Over to you, Sanjeev. Thank you very much, Sudeep. Uh, a warm welcome to everyone on this first webinar on the CA profession. Uh, and I had the you know, the privilege of introducing Richard Reiki. Uh, in fact, to many of us, he needs no introduction, but I think as it is customary, Richard, I'll keep it very brief uh, as, as director. Uh, Richard actually is a qualified chartered accountant, uh, qualified in 83 after doing his BCom honors and has over 37 plus years of experience. Uh, it is a multi-layered, multi-sectoral, Top of the pyramid experience behind him. He has served clients across all sectors in I think every possible way, uh, be it audit, tax, advisory. Uh, he's done so much. I've, I've kind of learned so many things from him that I can probably relate to a few of things which we have seen from him at very close quarters. Richard was the CEO of KPMG in India from October 2012 till early February 2017. And before joining the firm, he was a partner with RSM and Co. There are Pratha Anderson and EY for a short while before joining KPMG in India. Currently, Richard serves as a non-executive board member for KPMG Dubai and does many more things where he keeps on motivating youngsters, professionals across spectrum and is always available to one and all. Uh, welcome, Richard. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, very briefly about me, uh, I'm also a chartered accountant, almost spent 38 years in the profession now, uh, been in the council for two terms, uh, a member on the ISBA board, uh, and I think I'll keep it at that. Uh, coming to the topic of the day, the CA profession, value and ethics in the CA profession is the topic which we have you know, decided for today. Uh, excellence independence and integrity are the foundations of a trust in chartered accountancy. While the core values of our profession remains the same, I think every now and then we must look at re-scripting them as time changes to what they mean to us, both at a firm level as well as at an individual level. Introspection as professionals and as organizations help us to foster integrity to do what is right, action, excellence in every step, imbibe courage to say no to what is wrong, very critical, build empathy and spur togetherness and ignite our purpose for better. These form the strong foundation of the CA profession, especially if we want to grow beyond our reach and be seen as trustworthy in the long run by our clients, by our colleagues, by stakeholders. In my view, there are four pillars which are critical for growth of any, organiza any organization, any profession, and that is applicable to our profession as well. And these four critical pillars are focus, thinking big, collaborate, and act fast. So Richard, my four questions to you will be on these four pillars. Yeah. If I look at focus, CAs contribute to the core of growing businesses and serve as one of the most sought after professions in India, undoubtedly. So in the new reality, in what way do you feel the priorities of chartered accountants profession have shifted? Also, how have you seen leaders cope up with the changes that they have to make during this pandemic? Uh Sanjeev, first, good morning to you and good morning to everybody who's listening in uh, to this webinar. And uh, <clears throat> uh, and also one more thing, stay safe. Uh, we are living in very different times. I would say different times and challenging times. But uh, uh, Sanjeev, very interesting question. Um, I mean, this is something that uh, we are all debating with from time to time. I would like to start uh, by in the words of George Bernard Shaw, which I relate with because it talks to the spirit of stewardship on which I've grown. My entire life has been based on a spirit of stewardship. And for those who don't know it, 
it is when you get something in trust, you know, like Sanjeev, when we become partners, we get it in trust to hand it over to the next generation better than what we got it. So um, his words were, and I relate to these words, my life belongs to the whole community. I want to be thoroughly used up before I die. Life is sort of a splendid torch. I want to make it burn as bright as possible before handing it on to the future generations. Uh, uh, these words resonate with the way I've tried to lead my life or live my life. Today, like you said, what has changed? I think trust is at an all time low and trust across leaders, trust across professions and uh, more so in our profession because the stakeholders have changed. The stakeholders have become very proactive. The regulators have become very proactive. And this casts a huge and onerous responsibility on the profession to match up, to come up to speed. However, at the base of this, the fundamental principles of our professions have not changed, which is integrity, objectivity, uh, professional competence, due care, confidential, confidentiality, and professional behavior. These remain. I mean, these are the foundations of a chartered accountant. But... And also let's understand there's a huge amount of trust and confidence and reliance placed on our audit reports. And you especially said with a, a test function, which cannot be compromised at any point of time. We as professionals need to evaluate how do we stack up against this? And like you very likely said, technology has overtaken our lives. In fact, it is pervasive. Everywhere you go, it's technology. So to, earlier, you know, we used to do audits and then we say, okay, the technology people will come and do some IRM and et cetera, you know. Uh, but today, technology is so inherent into the audit, people would need to understand technology. So the one thing the Institute would need to do or it's already doing is to tech enable the new students so that they are technology enabled to be able to do the audits in a proper way and also to retrain and reskill older members so that they remain relevant in today's time. Without technology, we are nothing. So I think that's very, very important. Personally, I can tell you, I've spent a lot of time in learning the new technologies and understanding them. And because otherwise I will be out of any discussion that is happening. The entire edu uh, professional education training needs to be relevant to the time we live in. We need to be fast. We cannot be waiting for, you know, earlier we would, uh, you know, design courses and do it. Today, things are changing so fast. We have to move at the same speed so that the students who are coming out or even the senior professionals who get training are actually trained on the latest, whatever is happening. And people need to learn the new technologies, whether it's artificial intelligence, robotics, uh, big data, blockchain, et cetera. And how do we become impactful in the market in which we live. But coming back to the basics, ethics is the cornerstone of our profession. You very rightly said it, you've said it in your opening talk and values on which we have been brought up and in which our organizations, we need to imbibe those values. As professionals, I would say, we need to think of profit with purpose. Let's not take profit for the sake of profit with purpose. Why are we making this money? There's also need to re-looking at instilling a culture where mentoring, training, uh, R&D, uncompromising quality is built in the audit firms. Very important. And as professionals, we need to have the ability to stand up and say no. Very important. Here, I would just like to, you know, uh, Sanjeev, I would, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just going to digress a bit because this is one story when I read it, it completely, and I would encourage everybody, I'm not going to tell the story because it's too long. The story of Jamshed G. Tata, the original founder of the Tata Empire, uh, he actually built a group, which even after 100 years of his forming this group, still continues to live with those values and purpose that he put together. So what was his purpose? Greater good, caring for people. When he, when he was planning his factories, he used to first think about his workers and then think about the factory. Always ensured higher quality product and services. 
never attach commercial value to his purpose never attach commercial value to his purpose and j n tata as he is famously known is the single largest philanthropist in the last 100 years this is a global ranking he is the biggest philanthropist in the last 100 years in the world not even bill gates and others can match him in the time of money that they have put for philanthropy no other group has put that kind of money and we need to be proud of somebody from india actually getting there sanjeev with this uh, i think i will uh, uh, you know uh, i would like to you know ask you a question actually now after listening to a few things that you have said is uh, with so much change and uncertainty which we have both been talking about where can leaders look for inspiration yeah so thanks uh, richard for pointing out on the jamshed ji tata story i think uh, probably we had heard it at the firm also from you uh, i i recall those days uh, and it's so it's great that you know he he in those times also looked at integrity integrity and ethics and today the tata's name still holds those those values to their heart and i think is known to everyone for their ethical behavior world over now coming to the question which you were asking me on the change and uncertainty and the inspiration i think you touched upon technology in a very big way so even pre pandemic also the technology had impacted all of us you know automation was happening ai uh, machine learning etc etc were all there in the pandemic i think we are not living in a virtual world so the question is can we go back to our earlier world i think the answer may be no i think it will be a mixed world now as we go along it will never be the norm again which it used to be earlier there are changes happening there are regulations changing so all these uncertainties will bring in opportunities and the risk both you know you talked about the risk to the audit uh, you know the test function and i think that's where the leaders have a huge responsibility of looking at these changes these uncertainties which will bring in opportunities and risk both now i think a, a true leader uh, you know have those qualities of positivity you know taking their teams together having a crystal clear vision uh, listening uh, as you used to do so regularly with us communicating passionate uh, i can relate a lot lot with you again there trustworthy etc etc so i think as leaders also they also go through at times the challenges and i think they also need people to inspire them and i think uh, my view i think it is looking towards your own people and your own clients who you have worked with who probably should be the source of inspiration to a leader then now having said that i think in this in this current one year and the one and a half years last one and a half years i have seen the leaders who have touched their employees much more in you know looking at their not only the financial security but their mental security as well i think will probably go a long way in in you know remaining with the people because i think the people today are looking at who's with them in the difficult times i i know of a person who actually spent almost two to one and a half hours every day in calling his friends and his colleagues to find out about their well-being But those calls are really, really, at times, demotivating, distressing, because half of the calls at times would be someone has died, someone is not well, and you're trying to motivate. And I think leader is also human being. You know, it is a two-way process. I think he needs also to get this his boost of you know motivation. I think it is the people, your people with whom you work, who look at you, who you know, trust you. Uh, your clients who have trusted you i think they can be the source of inspiration in this changing times i think moving forward richard i think uh, the, the second pillar if i look at is thinking big you know as leaders you have to keep one eye on the present and also at the future as to what is happening you just can't look at the present and be happy with it because things are changing <clears throat> with an upsurge now in demand for the chartered accountants and the digital maturity which is happening all around us a wide range of training skilling upskilling reskilling would be required which can help the chartered accountants being prepared for the disruptions so my question is richard what are the traits young chartered accountants need to imbibe to be future ready 
with very difficult times changing times and what focus areas can help them shape their career and the road map uh thanks anjee for that question um and uh, i think you said a very good point i really liked it and i just want to reiterate it it's about mental well being uh, and you're talking of this uh, particular friend of yours who's to call up everybody in fact today leaders are expected to talk to their staff spend time with them maybe virtually whatever but i know many times you can't do much but at least being there is good enough and you know people value it and uh, uh, thanks for raising that point you know i think for every professional he has to, uh, they need to ask themselves an important question where do you want to build your kingdom where do you want to build your kingdom being in the service of others or helping others achieve their dreams creating value for the greater good i am just putting some broad points out here as each one decides where we want to be touching as many lives as we can you know as we go through our lives inspiring others because ultimately leadership is about inspiration do we inspire others to become and caring for the less fortunate because you know we should consider ourselves lucky all of us who are on this webinar we what about the people who have sacrificed for what we are today are we even grateful for all of that and each of us need to reflect on our own purpose you spoke about higher purpose you spoke about purpose many times even in your short video so we have to ask ourselves is our purpose selfish self centered aimed at our own growth or is it a higher purpose for the greater good of others i mean that is a question we need to ask ourselves and i mean i'm not saying anything is right or wrong i mean we are just giving some ideas and if i have to draw a road map like you said okay, as to what are the kind of things a young professional needs to i would only give few thoughts so that they could consider and this is these are not words out of a book these are words out of my life and i just want to put it across how i led my own life do the right thing and not the easy wrong thing do the hard right thing and not the easy wrong thing lead by example care and be humble and help other people achieve their goals you know uh, we can all become very famous fame and money looks all go with time but if we are in the service of others we will outlive i mean we will be remembered far long after we have gone be passionate about what you do whatever you do be passionate and put in that 10% extra every time that 10% is what differentiates a winner from a loser every time you do something next time 10% more nothing more influence and inspire people believe in making a deep and lasting and positive impact in every interaction you do add value to whatever you do. don't be a server you should be you know add value to every interaction then people will come to you upskill yourself from time to time we need to remain relevant please for your own sake you need to remain relevant the people whose jobs are at stake today are all the people who are between 40 and 50 all the middle level management are at deep end of a uh, deep side of losing their jobs because they have not remained relevant so please remain relevant people only pay for relevant people presentation and communication skills are very important written and verbal communication very important critical thinking we need to learn how to do critical thinking be innovative in whatever we do and this innovative is just a word i mean today innovative is required just to survive out of box solutions keep abreast with new technology i mean we have spoken about don't want to get more into it reading and learning new things all the time because we need to be uh, you know up to date with what's happening social skill be fair always uh, never sell anything that you would not buy never sell anything to you would not buy because it will come to haunt you let me tell you will come to haunt you later on have a mentor early in your life you spoke about your father you spoke about your first boss they were the people who guided your career get a mentor early in your life you will i mean that will be your biggest thing that you can get don't be afraid to fail i mean failure is a part you know for i can tell you personally i've learned the maximum in my failures when i was down and out i learned the maximum 
do people around you trust you ask that question to yourself do people around you trust you and what does trust mean being honest being in in a very difficult situation also being honest and you know i'll tell you one thing uh, sometimes these things don't go well with people but later on they accept it and they feel very happy with you you know it is all about how do we lead our life with integrity i remember there was a guy called ivan fernandez who was a spanish runner in a marathon uh there was a kenyan runner who was ahead of him but because he couldn't understand the language he couldn't reach the end finish what he did he pushed the kenyan runner across the line to where the finish line was and when the reporter asked him as to why did you let the kenyan win when you could have won the race he said what's the point of winning such a race the point i'm making out here the what's the point and then he said one more thing what would my mother have thought about me i think it's about the values on which you are brought so always do the right thing uh, and these are few qualities which i thought i will leave with you uh, sanjeev with people as they listen to some of the things that we are discussing and now i would like to ask you a question because you asked me in the current scenario so let me ask you something so in this scenario in which we live how can leaders firms chartered accountant professionals and students learn to deal with failure thank you richard i think you rightly said failure isn't a bad thing you know failure teaches you much more than the success yeah and i think the short point is as long as you learn from your failure grow and evolve from your past mistakes that's the best thing one can do i think for some people the perception is success as positive and failure as negative i don't think that is correct i think it is a failure which teaches us much more failure will teach us which way we were going which was not right how do we change our ways keeping our goals in mind i think it is often said that failure doesn't stop people it is how people respond and handle the failures that stops them i think you talked talked about being humble you know learning from your mistakes being accountable embrace change i just share one one incident you know which i had to go through uh, you know we had a very large multinational client in india uh, and we were doing his tax work where you know at times you would also have seen or the tax officer would make some additions and and in his case the additions were huge uh those my colleague partner believed that at commissioner appeals we will probably win it uh, and he did his best but unfortunately we at times don't get much relief at the cit appeal stage unfortunately especially when the numbers are big now a large client the ceo is sitting in india an unhappy client uh, and ultimately it was my responsibility for that kind of, that work being done i reached out to the client uh, met him because it would have had a huge impact on the work being done by the firm i went to him and told him very clearly and honestly that look this is where we are accepting that there is a problem finding a solution and telling him as to how we will find the solution also and i told him that look we have done our best and we are not saying that things have not gone wrong i think accepting a mistake and then also finding a solution and i think 6 months later uh, richard when we won the appeal at the tribunal stage the client was so happy that look here is a form which came back to me accepting what has gone wrong it is not necessarily that it had gone wrong because of you know them not doing something correctly and clearly but it is the system you know which one had to deal with so as long as you accept the mistake take your team with you uh and then try and do things i think it helps in the long run it always helps so you're you're coming up to a client and explaining it to him instead of you know running away and saying no no the tax department is always wrong and you know shying away from your responsibility etc i think it helped in a long way in building up those relationships i think going forward richard the the third area which pr- probably i think is dear to all of us is collaboration you know how do you collaborate collaboration actually enables bigger opportunities sparks innovation builds one voice diverse strengths not just at the firm level but an industry level too it helps demonstrates international cooperation and knowledge while showcasing the depth and 
breadth of the experience. So the question, Richard, is how can CA professionals foster collaboration to enhance efficiency and reinforce ethics confidently? Also, what does the CA of the future look like with the changes happening and the growth of the firms happening? You see, the Prime Minister wants the big four to become big eight and big 10 and some firms in India to grow big. I think collaboration will play a big role and you know, I want to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Sanjeev. Uh, uh, you know, as we grow up in school and colleges, uh, uh, we are taught competition. We are very competitive. We want to get the first rank, uh, you know, so it's competing against each other. And when we come into the corporate world, we suddenly realize it's not about competitiveness uh, with each other, but it's collaboration, teamwork, and how do we work together. And, uh, uh, and the one point that I will leave with the profession is if everybody can just give up their personal egos and everything else and come together on a larger platform where different organizations or different firms can come together to create a much larger firm. Because you know, when you create a much larger firm, you are operating at a very different level. You're moving from your personal kingdom to a larger kingdom in a smaller role, but in a larger kingdom. So everybody benefits. You have more money to invest. You have more money to do trainings. You have, you're in a much larger and clients also start looking up because then they say we're dealing with a larger firm. So I would say that uh, it's very important that each of the uh, uh, practices learn to come together to create a larger organization which is the need of the art to serve the larger corporates that are there in the market and also to provide high value services. Because many times what happens, Sanjeev, three, four things happen here. Number one, you can't hire very expensive talent because you can't afford it if you're a smaller firm. But when you're a larger firm, you can afford that talent because it's going to do over larger clients. You can invest a lot in R&D. You can invest a lot in training. You can invest um, in, uh, you know, uh, building uh, technology platforms, which are very good for your thing. Because the one thing that I've realized is that we as a profession have been very slow in technology adoption. And, uh, 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 and I think we need to adopt technology much more and become more relevant if we want to stay. And I think uh, we need to, uh, and the, the, the point that I would like to leave here on collaboration is the more we collaborate, the stronger we'll become and the better we'll become. Because anybody who collaborates will actually create a much uh, a better organization. And the question that we need to ask ourselves is, are you agile? You know, you spoke about agility, you spoke about uh, this thing. And do we grab the opportunities? And we also need to become experts in different domains because clients hire you for your expert advice. And that's very important. And one small thing I would like to leave for the youngsters out here and for everybody, actually, we work in organizations as a brand of the organization, but there is also a personal brand. And we need to work on that personal brand as we build it, because that personal brand will go very strong. And, uh, uh, and we need to live up to that brand promise. So I think Sanjeev, I think there, this, and, and I would just like to leave, I would just like one point out here to put out here is, you know, Mahatma Gandhi is somebody who's influenced my life quite a lot. And uh, he said something about corporates. And I thought it's important uh, 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 that we need corp corporation should be act as trustees valuing social responsibility alongside profits. I mean, this he said many years back, we talk about it today, but this, he was obviously a visionary who and uh, uh, you know rightly deserves where he wants. So I think this is what I will talk on collaboration, Sanjeev. And now I thought I will ask you a question, especially on the way the professional bodies need to react to the current, to your pillar three. So how can professional bodies, educational institutions, and the chartered accountant firms come together because it's all about collaborating again, right? Come together to demonstrate an end-to-end -end value for the profession, which we all, so we are so proud of that because we are today chartered accountants, very proud of being chartered accountants and very proud about the Institute. How do we actually come together to achieve this? I think uh, professional bodies play a very key role in, I think, 
giving exposure both to the students and to the professionals. I mean, if I look at the students, I think the institute has a huge responsibility on having the curriculum which is relevant because the times are changing. You know, our, our papers, our, our subjects should be relevant to the present need. And that is where I think the constant change, constant look at as to what is happening in the world over also is very important. We may pick up certain things. We may not pick up everything which the world is doing. And looking at our conditions, I think we need to remain relevant. I think one thing which I probably have looked at is that somewhere, some of us have a, a little need to do our finesse on the soft skills. Uh, what I've seen in my experience is that technically, uh, and people who do a good training are, are much better. And at times, the only thing which is wanting is probably our, our you know, small finesse on the soft skills, you know, presentation, our communication skills, our negotiating skills, et cetera, et cetera. And that is where I believe that if we spend some good money and give those, those training to the students who are coming out as young, new, fresh chartered accountants, I think it will do a lot of good. I personally have gone through so many trainings after being a partner for many years with the firm that I think these trainings have an important role to play. And the second learning I think from the training is that actually what we learn at training, we come back and start our day's job again and we forget what we have learned. So the one learning which I was, you know, uh, was given by my, one of my seniors is that if you have applied 50% of what you have learned in a training, I think you would have done a great job. So that's something which, you know, I kind of remember always that whatever I learn, I come back and see a week later how much I have experienced it and, you know, using it in what I'm doing. So that's a learning which I had. Second, I think if you're looking at demonstrating the end-to-end -end value for the profession, I think on this 1st July, a few days back, uh, the MCA has given its approval to the Institute's request on having multidisciplinary firms. Now, this is an issue which has been going in for the last, I don't know, at least 10 years I know of. Now, these multidisciplinary firms will permit you to have a cost accountant, a company secretary, and actually as you know, your partners. I think the process will take maybe a couple of more months to kind of get implemented. But if you have multidisciplinary firms, you have to remodel your practices, you have networking today. You talked about, you know, how do you grow from a smaller firm to a larger firm and how a larger firm can invest much more. I think you have to create networks and the networking guidelines are already in place for Indian accounting firms to network. Maybe over a period of time, they'll permit Indian accounting firms to have networks with the foreign companies also. So this networking will allow us to grow. We have a new code of ethics. We have changes in the companies that are happening, you know, where we can't provide certain services to our audit clients. Now, all these things, if you look at, and if you have the right set of people, I think uh, the profession can bring a huge amount of value to your clients. Uh, I think coming, Richard, to the last pillar, uh, which is act fast, uh, not re react, but respond. I think uh, that's one difference. But, you know, we have to be updated, you rightly said, more than our clients. Otherwise, how will the client value us? More than our competition to build credibility and trust. I think this credibility, trust, ethics, professionalism, I think this is being talked about so much everywhere. So the question is, how have your values and ethics helped you make faster and better decisions as a leader? Yeah. Good question, uh, Sanjeev. And uh, thank you for the question. Uh, this is something very close to my heart. Uh, just to share with everybody, basically, I'm a gut player. I play by my gut. Most of my most important decisions in life have not taken less than five minutes. Uh, this has been five minutes because I listen, the time I didn't listen to my gut, I went wrong. Let me tell you that. So, uh, And I always relate it. Uh, you know, you walk down a street and you see a good tie uh, and you like it and you buy it. But if you walk into a shop and keep looking for the tie, that means you'll never wear that tie again. That's been my personal experience. So always go with your gut, go with your inner voice, stay calm and listen to that voice. It will help you a long way. It has helped me personally take some of the most important decisions in a very short time. So for me, uh, Sanjeev, I've always held a long-term view. I've never been transactional in any of my, uh, and do not like cashing in on small opportunities, quick gains, quick wins, no. 
that is not the way to play you need to you said about the big picture and you know the big so so one needs to build trust with the clients and the best position we can be if the client can say he's my uh, they are my trusted business advisors i mean that trust them in the way they operate so many times personally i have gone beyond the terms of the contract to ensure that the real needs of the client are addressed it's not about money and i can tell you from my personal experience when i've given those advices to clients i may not have earned the money at that time but the client themselves have come back and said remember you helped me then now i want to help you and there have been clients who have come and helped me in my lowest moments when we were losing an audit and how they guided me through helping you know retain that audit and gave some advice because they believe that i that we as a firm had given them value and they wanted to so i think it is about building that relationship the trust where people will be very open remember when you act with higher purpose things generally turn out better so people see it people can see it people know when you are acting or when you are i have always acted from my heart my values and principles and these have helped me take the right decision so what have i done certain things that i've done i can't really share many of them but not accepting certain clients because their values are not aligned to our firm's value these are very large companies where we didn't even pitch for the audits so i just want to keep this on there client relationship go, goes beyond making profit uh, sanjeev i want to share one thing i'll not use the name of the client but uh, we had won a very large it was possibly the largest contract that we won uh, at that time in the firm and it was a five year contract within 6 months the client cancelled the contract because of certain things that happened in the us and uh, we lost that the team was livid because we had spent a lot of money in building it and they told me go and enforce the contract and what the enforcement of the contract means get one years fees as a penalty for breaking the contract i went because my team was so angry they completely you know overawed me i went into that meeting with the client saying we are going to enforce the client uh, the contract but when i sat in front of the client something in a small voice my inner voice spoke up and i told him we are not going to enforce the contract but if an opportunity comes again we would like to work with you and you know what he told me that you are one a client for life and that is not words till i was there in with kpmg uh for all those years we continued to do substantial billing with the client because when the opportunity came he brought the contract back to us so the the point is don't go for short term gains always listen to that inner voice and take the right uh, um i've had the opportunity of taking some very bold decisions at the firm on the people initiatives which people other firms did not follow and others followed it after it though people laughed at me when i brought it out but next year all of them were following exactly what we did a uh, higher purpose launch was very close to my heart and empowering people and you know some of the you know my best moment was uh, um, uh, 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 my best moment has been when i was able to do something for the office boys and uh, you know the firm was able to do and because i had that position i was able to uh, push it but the firm did it and you know what i got from them sanjeev was a pen which possibly i will never use but that pen is adorned as a greatest gift i ever received in my life they came and gave it to me on diwali and even today actually i get a lump in my throat when i see when these people came to give me that gift and it was something working with an actress was something which was great <clears throat> when you work with values and you build on a strong foundation you ask this sanjeev you can always grow faster and i want to give this example why do cars have brakes cars have brakes not because they can stop the car but because the car can drive faster so if your foundation is good and you got good brakes i mean your good foundation you can grow faster so your ethics and value will be the on which you will grow and uh, uh, you know and i would just say one thing uh, what like you had mr mama was my mentor early in my life uh, 13 years of my career 38 years of my career i spent in ratanis mama and company and i'm very proud of it for all those people who are there and that did not stop me from becoming a ceo in a big four 
that did not stop me. And I'm very proud of the training, what I got there and what I went on to become. I would like to just conclude by saying these few words. Your life has purpose. Your story is important. And these are for all people who are listening in. Your dreams count. Your voice matters. You were born to make an impact. I would, my last words would be that <clears throat> live life in such a way that when tomorrow comes and you are not here, how would you like to be remembered? Thank you, Sanjeev. And I would now like to ask you a question on the same topic. And, um, uh, you know, you have spoken a lot about the, uh, you know, responsibility of the profession. You have been on the Central Council. You have watched it from very close, two times Central Council member. Uh, how do you define the profession's journey of responsibility in accountability in the new decade? What is your vision for its future? I think, first of all, I can relate to a lot what you mentioned in, in your, you know, in your response to my question on acting fast, on ethics, on higher purpose. Uh, and I can relate to a lot of it because that was the time when I was going through the challenges where, you know, you came to me and the higher purpose and how we, you know, looked at it and the contribution to the society at large. I can relate to a lot of it, uh, uh, you know, with the passion with which you did those things. I think coming to the, the question which you asked me, I think you talked about integrity and ethics. We have talked about need to be focused, learning, innovative, building trust, collaborating, not transactional, long-term relationships. Uh, I've looked at a client, Richard, uh, which who I worked with in 97 when I joined the firm. The client came to me and said, look, Sanjeev, I want this work to be done. And my budget is only 25% of your fees. It was a very small amount of work. You know, my gut said I should do it pro bono for him. And it is 25 years today, Richard, that he still remembers that. And for so many years, I had the first right of refusal for anything the client wanted. This first question was, go to Sanjeev. If he can do it, he'll do it. Nobody else. You know, building those long-term life relationships. You talked about Ratanas Mama. I've talked about my first principal, uh, Mr. S.C. Vasudeva. You know, he taught me initially as to what should I do with my career. Small firm, but very proud of the fact that I've learned my basics there, which helped me to grow where I am today. I mean, so that I think... I think the, the profession has huge opportunities. You know, you we have technology which is a disruptor, which is bringing in change. We have unicorns, 21 unicorns in India are valuing about 73 billion. We'll have probably 50 odd more in the next year. We have regulations changing. We have international tax, international mergers. There are no boundaries today. We have insolvency law. We have, you know, uh, new things happening on technology front. You can do HR consulting. You can do IT consulting, strategy. I think we as chartered accountants can be a business solution provider to our clients. As you rightly said, wherever you can bring value, do that. Do that to the client. The client should remember you for the good work done instead of any work which may not bring you the next job. You, you have lifelong relationship with the client. That is what I think is required. And this profession has, has huge opportunities. So the accountability part, responsibility, accountability go hand in hand. I've seen you support your younger colleagues, give them responsibility, support them, guide them, and they'll do so well for you uh, and so well as an organization. I think one can do a lot. So there is, there is a lot which, you know, the CA profession can do for all of us. And I think uh, sky is the limit. Uh, I think we're running out of time. Uh, Sudeep, if there are any questions, we can quickly, you know, respond to maybe a couple of them because we probably have just kind of overshot our time. So we have the benefit of Richard being here. Uh, any questions which people want to ask him or me, happy to answer. Thank you, Richard and Sanjeev. We have received a couple of questions from our fellow professionals. The first one is from Mr. Sunil Bajaj, and this is for Richard Yu. Mr. Bajaj is saying that I like to comment on personal brand, and it's very important for youngsters to understand it. I relate to it completely and I have benefited from it immensely. Uh, maybe a few more tips on how to go about doing it would help anyone. So he's requesting for some tips on this, Richard. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Sudeep. And thank you, Sunil. Uh, 
I think, uh, you know, when I talk of, you know, you work for an organization, organization as a brand, when you talk of a person, you know, we, we are also brands. Each of us is a brand because um, uh, when people, when clients or situations ask for, they ask, they want to deal with Sunil or they want to deal with Sanjeev or they want to deal, how does that get built? It gets built through your quality of work through your ability to, um, you know, speak at various conferences, to speak at various forums, to write articles, to put your thought leadership out and get respected in the society. Because ultimately people come to you because you're an expert, because you can add value, you can solve their problem. So I think people need to work on this personal brand, <clears throat> on how we build it and how we take it forward and uh, uh, take it to the next level. So conferences, uh, writing, uh, writing various blogs or LinkedIn or whichever forum with social media platform you're using, uh, uh, get your thoughts across to clients uh, and potentially into the public, speak at various forums, let people start recognizing you. And, uh, and also remember that whenever you're on the stage, that's why I said it's very important to have both good written and uh, verbal communication skills. It's about the impact. It's just not about the content. It's just not about, uh, you know, what you're going to present, but it's also the way you present it and what kind of impact you leave. And let me tell you from my personal experience, many times you bump into some really important personality and you just get that one minute with him or her. And uh, are you ready to, you know, uh, say what you want to say? So make it brief, uh, keep it impactful and uh, let people... Uh, you know, remember you. Uh, uh, I don't want to go giving my personal examples, but uh, 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 there are times when, uh, you know, you go on audits or you go on various kind of assignments and then people only remember a certain set of people. They don't remember everybody. So what is the impact you leave on anybody in that interaction that you've had? And that would come from the care, the empathy that you show towards that person very, very important. And be very disciplined in your life. I would say do a lot of reading. Uh, ensure that, you know, you must have a vision for yourself. Like you do your goals for your firm, that this is my goal. Have your personal goals and say, how do I build my personal brand? I'm sorry, it's a long question. It's a long answer. But these are some of the things that I used in my, uh, uh, this thing. And, you know, many times these are uh, Eureka moments, you know. I realized that um, uh, I could do, uh, I could speak better without a presentation uh, one day when I was asked to suddenly speak and everybody liked it. And from that moment onwards, I decided that I'm not going to speak with presentations and I'm going to speak from my heart. And I think it's important. So for that, you need to be well prepared. Whenever you go to a public forum, Sanjeev, you've been on so many forums, so you will, you know, be able to relate with that. Yeah. Well, absolutely, absolutely. We have yes, another question from M.M. Bhaseen um, requesting for some guidance on what type of technology medium a CA firm should adopt. Sanjeev Richard. Uh, I, I think, uh, Mr. Bhaseen, uh, my mind, I think uh, I'm not a technology expert, but I think the technology would you, you would need is depending on the needs of your client. I think certainly for some audit tools, you would requ require a technology. You may not require a technology for your client management because if you're a small firm, you may not you may not need to spend so much money on you know just keeping a track of your clients. But I think the technology will certainly help you in your audits, which is required. Uh, that's one thing which you must have. Is my suggestion to you? Yeah. Also, Sanjeev, I just like to supplement. You know, the, yeah. today, the, uh, uh, Mr. Basin, there are many uh, uh, technologies which are developed already. What like Sanjeev was saying. And they are different for different purposes. One could be for your, um, you know, the way you do your audits. The other one could also be client, you know, your own operations, Sanjeev, when, you yeah. know, how do you capture the hours, etc. You see, because whenever you plan an organization, plan it that you're going to grow it in three to five years. So you need to put those processes in place and they're very reasonably available. There are different packages available. Uh, uh, and I know people who have been using it and they are very happy with those packages. You don't need to go develop it yourself and get somebody to build it out for you. They are available uh, and uh, a number of them are available, but we need to see which one will suit us, uh, you know, depending on the size of the organization, etc. 
No, absolutely, absolutely right. You know, you may require something for your accounting, something for your managing time, as you are suggesting, uh, and other other small, small areas which are available off the shelf also, uh, which can be used. Thank you, Sanjeev Richard. We'll take one last question, and this is from Mr. Vikas Arora. Uh, the question is: How can ethics enable CAs to steer organizations the right way? So, if we can share some views on this. Go ahead, Vikas. So, uh, honestly, we've been talking about this uh, now, and uh, uh, we've spoken quite a lot on ethics. So, basically, I will uh, just say one or two points. Uh, if we uh, if we do the right thing, if we follow our values, um, uh, and we are able to say no, like I said that we should have the guts and uh, this thing to say no and stand up for what matters. I think it makes a lot of difference. Uh, <clears throat> I still remember this one case. I remember I was in one of our international meets and I get a call from a very senior partner from the firm who says, I'm in a very difficult client situation. The client is insisting on this particular accounting treatment and tomorrow is the audit committee and we have to take a call. So I said, what is the downside? He said, the downside is we will be removed as auditors because a competing firm is willing to give an opinion I said, does it doesn't matter. I'm not going to hold you accountable for this. Let's do what is right. And uh, he went into that meeting with the technical support of saying that this is the meeting, this is our stand, and the client accepted it. And we still retain the client. The client didn't go. But the point is that we need to, when it counts and when it matters, uh, how do we stand up to that test? It's all good to talk about values. I think we need to learn to live these values. Uh, I can't give names here, but I can tell you some very, very large audits, um, some of the biggest in the country we did not pitch for because they were not aligned to what we were and we didn't take it. There could be many engagements. I can tell you one of the largest is Sanjeev will know about it, but we can't use names here, where um, I said no, at that time I was not the CEO. I was heading advisory and my CEO fired me. Uh, you know, he called me and told me, who the hell are you to stop this engagement from coming in? And uh, I uh, said, no, we are not taking this engagement. History and time spoke for what was the right decision because we would have today been somewhere else if we had gone ahead and accepted that engagement. But I think we need to be able to stand up uh, and uh, count and say what matters most on our mind. So ethics has got to be lived. And we've got to do the right thing. See, I'm not here giving a moral lecture that this is right and that because everybody has their own views. But when something in our mind tells us this is the way, I think we should go with it and, and be there. So I'm not bothered with other people do. They can, everybody can do what they want, but we need to lead our life on certain values and principles and be happy about it. Other thing, remember one thing, you have to finally live with your conscience. And that is very important. And that's a question. Do you get proper sleep at night? And that's a question that you need to ask yourself. And that will happen if you lead an honest, straightforward life, whatever the situation. Sanjeev spoke about one mistake made and the, he worked with the client to find a solution. And I can have numerable mistakes I've made and worked with the clients to find the solution. But be honest with the client and tell him, yes, we have goofed up. We are sorry about it but now I will work with you to solve it. So I think that is the other part of it, but also on the other side, not to do the wrong things. Yeah, I think just to add there, Richard, uh, there is no right way of doing the wrong thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> both, both personally, individually, and professionally both. Remember my dad used to say that you're not answerable to anyone, you're answerable to your own conscious first. So when yeah. you open the morning, can you look into your eyes in the mirror and say, look, you're doing things the right way. I mean, I remember of an incident, Richard, where a client asked me for my opinion on tax. Then he came back to me and said, well, sorry, I don't agree with you. I said, fine. He says, I'll go to someone else. Said, Please go ahead. And uh, Sanjeev, I would later, like to he, share. Sorry, sorry. Carry on. And two weeks later, Richard, he came back to me and said, now I agree with you. I said, now what has happened? He says, look, the other consultant also agrees with you. Very so, good. I think you need to stand firm, politely, but I think stand tall and believe in what you're doing. Ethically, professionally, and I think in the long run, it helps. Short run, there can be challenges, there can be problems, there can be difficulties, as you explained. But I think long run, Richard, it, it absolutely helps is tried and tested. 
as you've seen it yourself. So yeah, I would uh, just like to share one incident, Sanjeev. I was addressing at IIM Ahmedabad a bunch of chief commissioners of income tax who were just becoming chief commissioners, so they were going through training at Harvard and at IIM Ahmedabad, and I was asked to come and speak on higher purpose in leadership. And uh, uh, the one thing, you know, it was a very long session. They asked me a lot of questions. I was wondering income tax people, you know, but they asked a lot of questions. And then one lady, chief commissioner, she stood up and she said, you know, this guy spoke about higher purpose. I can only say one thing, his firm lives higher purpose. And that was the best comment I got in the feedback, you know, and she gave that, I'm not getting into that incident, but she gave that incident, what happened and how uh, KPMG dealt with it at that time. And it was a really, truly proud moment for me, honestly. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. I think in the long run, uh, Richard, ethics, integrity goes a long, long way in building your brand. You spoke about brands. Sunil asked you a question. I think ultimately these things help you build that brand yeah. for yourself and for the firm which you work for. Both. Yeah. It's a big win-win for both, actually. That's it. Yeah, so we'll take one last question before we close today's discussion. It's an interesting one. This is from CA Arjit Agarwal. What advice in brief would you like to give to youngsters? This is do and don't in beginning. For the young CAs. Uh, sorry, what did you get? I didn't get the last part, Sudeep. Uh, yeah, so uh, CA Arjit Agarwal is asking, what advice in brief would you like to give to youngsters? Yeah. Uh, basis of what they should do and don't do in the beginning. Like okay. The first here. thing, uh, okay. Uh, Sanjeev, can I take this question? Uh, so the, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so the yeah. first thing, the first thing that you don't do uh, is uh, don't sell anything that you would not buy. Uh, uh, you know, the, the first thing, secondly, uh, uh, important that when you are starting your profession, uh, work very hard, be very disciplined. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so when I talk of discipline, you know, it, it's very easy to say it, you know, I remember one of my colleagues and uh, somebody who Sudeep worked very closely with, he said he had given an internal competition to himself that he would reach office uh, faster than I would reach, earlier than I would reach. And he said, once he tried to come very early and he said, I saw your car parked in the car parking. So I said, again, this guy's beaten me to it. So I think it's not about the hours that you spend, but it's about being disciplined of how you lead your life. Discipline is very important. I would say empathy is very important. How you show care for your clients. How do you, uh, you know, if you put those ethical principles and values on which you want to lead, um, I think that would be on which you will grow. because That's what you'll be remembered for. See what happens when we are starting our career. We just take any client, any work. We need work, so we take it. Don't do it. Doesn't matter. Even if you get less work, no problem. Use that time to train yourself, to build yourself, become a better professional. Take on a small course in case you're not getting work, you know. Uh, but I'll tell you in the long run, it may be a struggle for one or two years. But when you are starting out, you need to think of that struggle. Don't ever throw in the towel. Perseverance is the most important quality that you need, that you need to persevere with your goal. So is your goal to become that? then you need to work very hard to go and get it. There will be very many low moments in your life. There'll be times when you want to throw in the towel. So, but I think you need to uh, always learn to pick yourself up. My biggest learnings have come from, uh, you know, I remember when I was at Arthur Anderson and I did not make it to partner and I just want to share this with you. I was very angry and I was so upset <clears throat> uh, and said, I thought I deserved to be a partner. And first 15 days, I raved and ranted like anybody else. And then I thought, no, I need to work hard. Maybe I've not done a good job and I need. That one year, I worked relentlessly. I got my talent up. And just to share with you, uh, uh, when I made it to partner, uh, and the next year when everything got evaluated, you get, you got, uh, you know, corrected and you went back three, four years above. So, uh, you know, so level corrections were also done and everything else. So I think ultimately talent is seen. I think you need to continuously work hard, put your head to work, live in the present, don't live in the past or the future, live in the present, work hard, be disciplined, be honest, uh, uh, you know, follow, and also be well, all, always uh, become a specialist in something. 
one area you you can't be a specialist in everything you should have general knowledge in everything but you must be a specialist do a lot of reading and just not technical books but also about the world and how things go why are oil prices going up why is the dollar to rupee not going you know how is the economy at the macro economic level i think you need to be well versed so that you could have intelligent conversations with people who matter i think these will go very well for youngsters find a role model find a mentor with whom you can work whom you trust uh, who can help you achieve your goal be willing to take negative feedback be willing to take all the things that improve you and also most important which many of us are not and many of us i'm saying it again be self aware of who you are what are your strengths what are your weaknesses my view has always been work on your strengths and neutralize your weaknesses you can't get over your weaknesses this is the way we are all structured we are all five fingers are not equal so everybody is not a great marketing guy or everybody is not a great tax guy but so neutralize your weaknesses and work on your strengths become an expert at what you are the world has to recognize you we spoke about that brad they should be able to see you uh, arijit and we you should be able to be recognized there in the market it takes time please it takes time don't worry we have all i've got 38 years of experience maybe you are just starting your career uh, uh, it takes a long time before you reach somewhere have the patience have the patience Absolutely. things will come in your time to you just to, just to add to sudeep what richard said i think everything absolutely you know absolutely relevant i think one thing which richard mentioned in his earlier discussion work that extra 10% yeah richard mentioned in his earlier discussion i think and as i have seen dream big is what richard would always tell us have a clear vision uh, and i think be passionate richard always used to say work from the heart you know yeah work from the head the difference is when you work from the heart uh, and i think that brings that you know difference in what you are doing which will be appreciated by some people in the longer run may not be in the short term absolutely bang on uh, i think great advice for everyone uh, at every age not only youngsters to follow these principles ethics professionalism vision honesty you know and 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 be passionate i, I really like the 10% extra bit richard which you know you. which makes a difference actually it always it makes a difference yeah yes sudeep so with this we come to the end of this uh, webinar thank you so much sanjeev richard for sharing your valuable suggestions on such an important topic of values and ethics in the ca profession and i would also like to thank all the fellow professionals who joined this live webinar thank you and have a good day ahead thank you sir thank you very much the thank, thank you richard you. for you know, sparing your time really no sir sanjeev all the very best to you and uh, uh, may god be with you thank you very much I appreciate it. thank you thanks thanks, thanks everyone thank, thank you, you. The best advice I received was from my dad to be honest in all my dealings whether it is personal or professional. Hi, my name is Sanjeev Chaudhary and I am a chartered accountant practicing for the last almost close to 38 years now. I love to spend time with my family and if I'm lucky uh, I do spend time with my grandson who's going to be 3 years old. My dad was an inspiration to me. He taught me the values and made me what I am today. The other person who inspired me the most was my first boss. He actually helped me shape my professional life. But the most inspiring of all is my wife. Integrity and ethics are very close to my heart and the way I operate. People may be very successful, they may be very educated, but if there's lack of integrity and ethics then all that success has no meaning at all what is the benefit in case people don't trust you from the time i started in the field technology has brought about the biggest change things have become faster is it accessible and one can do a lot more with a variety of tools available the other big change which has happened to the profession is the expectation of the stakeholders especially for the attest function performed by chartered accountants one should be able to collaborate
capacity to listen and have the drive and ability to bring teams together to achieve the chartered goals. My biggest motivator is serving the CA profession, to be able to give back to the profession which has given me so much. I call it a higher purpose. I can bring my experience on the table and my life's learning to motivate the young chartered accountants to do better in this profession. Responsibility and accountability go hand in hand, and one cannot expect accountability if there's no responsibility. Technology is changing the way we work today. It is time we accept the need to go beyond our conventional role and be a business solution provider to our clients. The future is more exciting than we know today, and I think we as professionals need to upgrade and upscale ourselves so that we remain relevant to the business opportunities available to us. Having said that, no compromise on ethics and integrity at all, absolutely. Okay, Sanjeev, all the best. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very Bye. much, Richard. Really Bye. appreciate it. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody.